Welcome to the Sherry Grover Gallery. I'm Cynthia Sears, and it was my great honor and privilege to found this museum. And this is my favorite room. You're not supposed to have favorite galleries in a museum. You should love them all equally. But this is my favorite room. It is named for Sherry Grover, the late Sherry Grover, wife of Max Grover, an artist in Port Townsend that a lot of you know. The theme of this show is all sorts, which it was a bit of a cheat on my part because I didn't really know what I wanted to display in this iteration. And all sorts allows you to do anything you want. Also, I liked all sorts. The little licorice candies that they make in England that are very decoratively wrapped and colored. So come on in. Our signature piece for this show is the Scotus Marriage Decision. Each book represents one of the justices and what his or her opinion was in the Scotus marriage decision. And the majority opinion is love is love is love is love. Artist books are sneaky that way because they lure you in with a pleasing exterior. And often when you open the book, you find a lot more serious content. They have been called the Trojan horse of art because of this, but they, it's a very benign army that is inside, army of information. So I will show you some of my favorite pieces in this show, although I actually love every single one. You may remember flashcards from fourth grade. This is a series of flashcards by Lou Cabin, who was a professor of art and a wonderful book artist. Lou was very concerned because she discovered that these words that are on these flashcards were eliminated from the Oxford Junior Dictionary. Beginning in 2007, these words do not appear and the reason was stated they no longer had relevance to children under the age of 10. I mean, that boggles my mind. So Lou made, in protest, a set of flashcards under the title, Words Every Child Has a Right to Know. I'd like you to see two relatively new pieces that were added to the collection at the beginning of this year. First, this beautiful pop-up book by Susan Loudermilk called You Cannot Put a Fire Out. And that is the title and the first line of a wonderful short Emily Dickinson poem in which she uses the image of fire and also of flood as being forces that you cannot always control. And she was using them as a metaphor for creativity. So once the fire begins to burn, there's no way you can just turn it off. And you cannot fold a flood and put it in a drawer. You cannot put a fire out. A thing that can ignite can go itself without a fan upon the slowest night. You cannot fold a flood and put it in a drawer because the winds would find it out and tell your cedar floor. Tell in that sense just means touch the cedar floor. Um, but as you can see, even though she is talking about the physical fire and the physical flood, all of her language equally applies to a work of art and saying that a thing that can ignite, this is of the fire, can go itself without a fan. And that was a purposeful pun. The use of the word fan to be a supporter or an enthusiast was in use at the time that she was writing. 
And the other piece, which I find so charming, is by Lynn and Jean Olson, and it's called Vanilla. And it is an ice cream cone on which beautifully sewn is a little poem in praise of vanilla. I don't know which to choose. All the flavors just confuse. There's chocolate, mocha, swirl, and chip, strawberry freeze, crunch, and dip. Too numerous to list, each one difficult to resist. So take them away. I'll have my favorite today, vanilla. One of the first book artists I collected when I came up to Bainbridge in 1989 was Diane Jacobs, who created this striped bra and undies. Diane is a fascinating book artist who makes sculptures that you can read. She prints uh, and then slices uh, each line into a, a very thin strip that she will weave into different patterns. The words that she prints are less beautiful. She investigates dictionaries of slang, insults, taunts, and she prints those on the strips of paper and then as an act of empowerment uses that so that the woman who is going to put on this bra and panties has control over and is not intimidated by the nasty words that are printed on her underclothes. And to make this piece, Diane said this, over a three-year period, I collected slang and derogatory words that exploit women. The exhaustive list came from friends, family, and several dictionaries on slang. Strangers also contributed by writing on anonymous pink and blue cards, their answer to the question, what are the worst names you have ever been called? And Diane collects all of those worst names, prints them, and turns them into a work of art, which I see as empowerment. This is a new piece called Conventional Burdens. It's by Tamar Stone. It was inspired by this page from Harper's Weekly back in the Victorian era. And the image shows the Monster Lady of Crinoline. And the Monster Lady of Crinoline is as tall as a two or three story building and all of the people are gathered under her huge crinoline. It was the Victorian fashion that for one thing, making it impossible for women to move much. They had to stay in place because of the heavy skirts and also the rigidity of the skirts that kept people at a distance. It is perfect for this day with social distancing. This is a beautiful piece, but it does remind you of all of the restrictions that women had to bear and that were enforced by their clothing, whether it was the acreage of skirts around her or the tightness of the bodice. The book itself, as you can see, is printed beautifully on cloth. The theme of this piece is confinement. It was completed during the pandemic of 2020 when social distancing and house detention were thrust upon us. The project was inspired by various historical texts that alluded to a woman's limited sphere. Mary Wollstonecraft's 1792 treatise, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, declared, taught from their infancy, that beauty is women's scepter, the mind shapes itself to the body, and roaming around its gilt cage only seeks to adorn its prison. She is restricted from doing, going where she wants to go and doing what she wants to do, but she is on display as an ornament. I want to thank you all for spending this time in the Sherry Grover Gallery 
and hearing a little bit about this new show, All Sorts. We look forward to seeing you in the book room. Thank you. Thank you.